welcome back. Um, today I'm trying to fix a bug in Atomic Chess. Um, and in attempting to fix it, I'm noting a regression and just basically losing my mind here, but that's okay. Uh, Atomic Chess is difficult. It's going to take a few iterations to get it right. This is about iteration number 100 or something. I lost count forever ago. I can't give you an accurate number of how many times I've tried to get this correct. Um, although, if you look through the log files, um, I'm sorry, if you look through the commit messages and extrapolate that what actually got committed to the master branch is only a fraction of the attempts that have been made, um, you get a pretty good sense of how much time was spent on this. At any rate, um, so here's my current uh, patch that I'm attempting. It seems pretty common sense that if you're playing atomic chess, you can't allow your opponent to, or I'm sorry, you can't yourself capture next to your own king. So I'm trying to fix the move generator so you don't have to validate the moves later. Um, if you don't generate illegal moves in the first place, then, yeah, I mean, you're better off for it. Oh, I forgot. Um, this is what I was going to test before I got distracted already this morning. Uh, perfect Atomic? Does that work? No. Um, set option UCI variant value Atomic set option name UCI variant value atomic um, let's grab the string because I've sent uh, second sense that I'm going to need that string in just a second uh, go perfed depth four now that's for the standard chest start position um, it really is difficult in that position to test all these things. It'd be better to test perfed from other positions. Um, I wonder, for purposes of my testing here, maybe it makes sense to go into benchmark. Um. So we have this list of positions, right? Okay. So I could probably change this script to instead of doing a search, um, the just to use the perfed command. Um, so go equals go limit type limit. Um, I think I'd want to, for purposes of trying to troubleshoot this, replace that go command with go perfed and then limit. Um, let's try that. If one else and if this is my way of noting I've got to go back here and remove this at some point. Go perfed limit. Okay. Um, unless there's a way I could like override limit type itself. Oh, never mind, there it is. Wait, so how do I do this? In-stream token, otherwise depth. Oh, so this takes multiple parameters. I only was aware of the first three. Transposition table size, number of threads, the limit parameter itself. Um, and then I could say default, and then I could say, instead of depth, I could say, um, so I've been issuing this command earlier today, 16.1.1, but it takes more parameters. Default, and instead of doing a depth-based search, 
Uh, I could do just do perfed. Oh, that's excellent. That's gonna help me immensely here. So I could compare my experimental version to the master. At depth one, we hit the same perfed numbers. How about depth four? 433, uh, whereas over here, 433. So legal move generation is unchanged. Um, depth eight. Okay, that took a little longer, didn't it? Uh, let's try six. And as long as the total number at the very end comes out the same, um, I think we can conclude that this is just a speed up and not a functional change, despite the fact that it changes the bench number for a standard bench test. Um, but yeah, perfed itself that consists of legal moves that were generated is unchanged. Uh, figure that one out. Okay, I have grossly misunderestimated how much time this is going to take. This is actually going to take on the order of minutes to finish. Let's try five instead of six. All right, 4303, that ends in 056. And the experimental version, it's gonna end in 056. Yeah, I have not changed the number of legal positions that are generated. I've only changed the bench number, which is just insane if you think about it. Um, that, like here I am, um, 321 nodes searched versus the master, which says it searched 330 nodes. Um, but this, as we verified through perfed, this doesn't change how many legal moves are generated. I guess that means once per every test position, um, we're generating an illegal move on average. That is nuts. How could that be? I'm sure that's a coincidence. Um, well, so I should take a closer look at Benchmark. Uh, so... Where was it that we saw this token? Is that Fen file? So if I created a file that consisted of fens, um, then I could control what goes into this test. Um, yank those nine lines and then test that fen. That's not it. That's not it. There we go. Um, yeah. Uh, so I want to take one, two, three, four, and a quote, and remove that, as well as remove quote comma. But I think furthermore, let's just put those eight lines in the buffer for now. Um, and instead of doing default perf, let's say test.fen. Uh, with perfed again um, with a limit of actually yeah we want to do a depth based search 21 okay and then I could compare this to the master which is also 21 um, so we're gonna tackle this one step at a time 119 119. Okay, not that issue. That's not the problem. 
Well, one of these positions has um, the engine generating a different move count. We just haven't figured out which yet. 256. Two ninety nine. Oops, and then yeah, two ninety nine. Three ten. Three ten. Well, we know it's going to be one of these last two. Um, Three seventeen. That was stockfish. The master base, 317. So it's this last position that screws it up. Black to move. Um, 321 versus 330. Um, that is to say, if I were to take all of these other than that last position out of there, um, and try the test once more. We get 13 versus 4 as the move count. Um, okay, so um, yeah, oh, let's run Stockfish. Um, set option name UCI variant value atomic position FEN this thing show me the position so this is what it looks like um, black to move obviously neither pawn can move and the king has only three legal moves here so Somehow we came up with four nodes searched. What's the deal here? How is this searching four nodes and yet um, somehow the standard Stockfish analyzes the uh, 13 nodes here? We're not talking about a number that's over 20. We're talking about something that is traceable. We could look at like every node that it's looking at. I'm just trying to look at this position and figure out is there something, any clue here? Um, I don't think so, but it'd be nice to know. Well, actually I could look at what moves are executed in do move and undo move. Um, we have a routine do move here. Let's do it. Um, if one and if. And I've only had to do this a million times. So f print f to standard error so we get the message. Okay, and put a new line at the end of each of these. UCI colon colon move of M, not chest 960. Print this as a C style string, and then say the same thing with the FEN representation of the position. We've got to compile this. Um, make J2 build architecture. So, wait, why are we getting so many files compiling here? I didn't do a make clean at any point, did I? What have I changed? Just the one file, although I must have touched more than just the file. Okay, well, whatever. Um, so, 
yeah. Wait. Oh, okay. I think I removed test two dot text already. Um, set option name UCI variant value atomic. Um, position then this and go depth one. Yeah. That way I don't have to type those commands over and over. So we can see it executed moves. Um, in fact, since it's helpful to have the diagram, let's put the diagram in the middle of all this. So the moves that get executed were A7B6, A7A8, A7B8, and then A7B6 again. Um, not sure why I got so far as looking at A7B6 and trying to search it deeper or something like that, but that's what it did. Um, whereas, suppose I were to do a similar exercise. Uh, what branch are we on again? We're on atomic move generate. Um, get stash, get checkout master, compile that shit. Oh, get stash apply first. Uh, then compile that shit. I uh, thought I saw something here. Hmm. Apparently it's just my imagination. I thought I saw some little creature running around. It's a bit unsettling. Well, there's no creature here. Okay. So I should be able to rerun this test. Um, like that. And we see it looks at A7B8, A6, A7. Wait, A6, A7, it's black to move. Okay, so for some reason Huh. Are any of these moves considered illegal in those given positions? Like we see um, the move counter increases and such there, so um, there must have been some reason to look at A7. Why does this feel compelled to look at A7 and the other one doesn't? That seems seems like if we're searching at depth one, this might be reasonable. It might be reasonable to look at all those moves. Um, so a seven, b eight, b seven, a seven, a eight, queen. Yeah, that's quiescent search doing its job there, seeing that we have forcing moves, so we need to look at them. Um, Stash, get check out the branch we were just looking at, get stash apply, get diff master. Um, so earlier there I'm saying enemies cannot include squares next to our king. Um, and down there we're doing captures and non-evasions, I'm saying that captures, oh, um, yeah, both of those cannot include occupied squares adjacent to our king. Um, which still seems right. You can't move to a square that's occupied. Um, even under the guise of, I don't care whether I'm capturing or not, you still can't capture your opponent's material. What confuses me is, uh, well, hang on. So apparently looking at the moves that actually got searched was not 
the most constructive endeavor. I don't know why not. It really seems like, yeah, I'm not sure. Seems like we didn't have to search all those things, but I don't know. Like, this change here shouldn't have any effect on uh, the bench number. It doesn't change the number of legal moves, so why should it change the number of positions that get searched? Um, somehow it does. Which is the most confusing thing. If type is equal to captures, then target cannot include squares next to our king. So now, if type is one of those two types, um, make sure to restrict target to not include squares next to our king that are occupied. Um... I guess there might be a problem with en passant there. In rare positions, you'd still want to consider that, too. Okay. So that itself is a bug. Um, although, I elsewhere ensure that the en passant square is not illegal. Uh, so, that hasn't been committed yet, either but um, it would be a good thing to commit. But that isn't something that needs to be done for purposes of what we're testing in this one instant. We'll get back to that uh, before we commit anything to the master branch. But yeah, here... Non-evasions... Um, get status if zero or one. Yeah. I want to change this to say if capture m, then print this. Um, oh, of course I need to compile this. This is not a script. This is test, uh, this is compiled code. So we do need to compile it prior to testing, but, um, I mean, I could try changing parts of those expressions too, like the part that says non-evasions, I could say, um, just do that thing for captures and see if that has any effect. Um, Oh, oh right, um, this doesn't, no, this does say nodes three. It only looks at three nodes. Did the master search give a number of nodes that were searched? Nodes 12. Okay, so nine additional nodes were searched there. Uh, grab nodes? Rep plus plus. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. So here we are. The legal list of moves. Um, that's also curious because, well, anyway, this would be where I'd want to print out whatever I'm printing. Well, this is perfed, though. Perfect itself uses the legal move list. Um, okay, look at all these places that change uh, the node count. At least some of them do. Um, search at CPP in several instances. Oh, UCI. Okay, nodes searched. Um, <laughs> accumulate of thread nodes. Okay. Um, yeah, 
works. So I think we need to go to search.cpp and see all the places that nodes get incremented. One, of course, is in perfed, which counts the number of legal moves. But there are other contexts under which node get, nodes gets incremented. Um, I mean, here it just gets outright assigned to the perfed count, but that's not what we're looking for. Um, wow. How can nodes get consumed in so many places, assigned in so few, and yet, hmm, um, I guess I'll take a look at misc.cpp, unless nodes.fetch add actually increases the node count, which maybe it could. Um, get group. Okay, I've lost track of how it is that nodes gets incremented. This might have something to do with it indirectly. Um, that seems, I don't know. That seems highly unlikely. Nodes searched. All right, so thread uh, dot h return thread colon colon nodes so I think we want to look at thread dot cpp nodes is equal to tb hits is equal to zero <laughs> start searching Okay. Wow, this is unfortunately not making it easy to count um, where things get searched. I mean, it's one thing to know that perfed itself um, will only deal with legal moves, but hmm. Oh, there's UCI where we looked at nodes searched, but I want to look at what increments nodes searched. Um, it might be that what that add routine that we were looking at, fetch add. Um, that doesn't seem right though. I mean, if that were to be the place that nodes got incremented, we would see that somehow. Um, some header file would declare nodes add as being an important function. This has got to be something not related to, or hopefully not related to, the node count. I would be very surprised if that were actually what did the counting. So, at the same time, I see like nodes searched. Um, it has to be counted somewhere. You have accumulate of thread nodes. I mean, maybe it is that. Maybe there is some sort of tree structure or something that's maintained, and this is the most efficient way to handle that. But um, I think perhaps better than me trying to track the node counter uh, would be for me to go into the legal move generator and do what I used to do here. Um, we don't need to track it in under that specific circumstance. We just need to grab those three lines and um,
So, oh, let me think. Let me think. See, the unfortunate thing is that um, it isn't really easy to count in any way. Like, well, in fact, here we are. Um, I was gonna say there's no way to iterate through the moves and print out whether or not they're legal. Um, by position sort of thing. But no, I think here in the move generator itself, um, we say if, the, if we're doing validation, um, wait, how does this work? If validate, or the from square is the king square, or the type of move is an opposite move. Um, how does that work again? It's been too long. Oh, otherwise, yeah, if we're dealing with atomic moves, and the move itself is a capture, and it's not legal, decre move, decrement the move counter. So position.legal is going to get called through every execution of this code here. Um, or even position.capture will. So inside the move legal routine in position.cpp, we could put this debugging code to uh, track what kind of move it is that we're trying to validate. Um, and that way we can see what are all the moves that got generated and which of them are legal and which of them aren't legal. Um, so, in fact, it'd be best to do that just in the uh, move is legal case. But anyway, uh, test2.txt, try that. Um, so here are all the moves that we looked at, a7b6, a7b7, obviously not legal, a7b8, a7a8, uh, search at depth 1, and then we come up with c1b1, c1d2, c1d1, c1b2. Okay. A Fibonacci sequence problem. Um, there are actually are resources like online. Uh, I'm trying to remember. There's a name of one, um, Rosetta Code or something. Um, let me see if I can find it. Yeah, Rosetta Code, and this has um, oh wow. So I could type in Fibonacci. You get all sorts of things, um, all sorts of results for this, but if you want the Fibonacci sequence generator in every programming language, here it is. So here's an 0815 360 assembly, all these other assemblies, every programming language ever. Uh, you want it in C, here it is in C. Recursive and iterative and analytic and generative forms. And then there's a faster method and for a single value, and here it is in C++ and Python. And, uh, but, I mean, I could try to provide general advice without having looked too closely at it. You need to make a counting method that takes two parameters. Okay. <laughs> Sounds pretty challenging. Can you even have a function that has two parameters? No. Okay, so yeah. Um, yeah, I'm curious. But I think maybe compare your solution to what's out there in Rosetta code. Um, but let's see, first parameter should be where you want to start the count, and 
and the second should be the number of things to be counted. Okay. Yep, yep, yep. What if you want to start the count from a number that's not in the Fibonacci sequence? I mean, okay, leave it to me to ask the hard questions. Oh, and the count number can be negative. Okay, cool. Can it be an imaginary number? Can it be an irrational number? Uh, yeah, you could all do all kinds of fun things with Fibonacci sequences. Oh, the count number can, itself could be negative. Okay. Oh, uh, they take all the fun out of the assignments these days. Um, but yeah, you, you have a way that you want to be able to like specify. Yeah, I kind of get what you're saying. See, so if you have like five negative one or something, it'd be five comma three. Yeah, so. I think basically what you want to do is just generate all the Fibonacci terms and then print out the subset that you want printed. Um, yeah, I think that's probably far easier than trying to come up with a formula to back uh, trace the previous Fibonacci terms. Um, I mean, it's either that or use the Fibonacci formula. Um, and you'd probably get funny looks if you were to do this. Um, but yeah, you could use this formula here using the golden mean, the associated golden number um, to come up with um, any term of the Fibonacci sequence. So let me see if I can uh, get a more, I don't know, beautiful form of that. Uh, the nth Fibonacci number. I mean, it's either generate the terms the way I suggested, or do it this way. Which, use phi to the n minus minus phi to the minus n over the square root of 5. Um, or generate the terms, um, and then print out the ones you wanted to print it. <laughs> you probably get funny looks, though, if you were to use this thing. So, yeah, it's, I mean, here's the formula, 1.61, etc. to the n minus negative 0.618 to the n, all divided by 2.23. I mean, I don't know what you, what else you want. Uh, it's probably easier to just, like, build your array or whatever construct of values and then just print the ones you want printed. Um, it's probably easier than doing this stuff. But this might work too. I mean, what else? Is there a third way to do it? Uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, if you had a quantum computer, maybe there would be some way to say, I've got the tenth term of the sequence, now go figure out what the ninth term used to be. It simulates all possible realities under which um, um, numbers could have been added together to form a sequence and, I don't know, back propagates somehow. But yeah, I think probably just the practical approach is probably the most practical here. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's not that tricky with an array, because you know, okay, just allocate an array of dimension a million or something like that, and fill in however many terms you need filled in to you'll, until you hit the number, and then print out the number and then the numbers before it, 
or that sort of thing somehow. I, I mean, technically you don't know like the dimension of the array, although you might be able to use like master's theorem and some calculus to come up with a pretty good approximation as to the array bound. But um, it's probably easier to just like allocate a really big array or a list. I don't know what language you're dealing in, but yeah, if the language makes it easy to work with lists, use lists. If the language makes it easy to use arrays, use arrays. Just do whatever makes it easy. Ah, uh, C sharp. Ooh. <laughs> I haven't had to touch that in quite a while. That's got to be fun. Yeah, so if you want to do it in C sharp, here it is C sharp. Recursive, tail recursive, iterative, eager generative, lazy generative, analytic, matrix form, array or table-based lookup. Um, yes, there's all these ways that it could be done. What the heck is this? Why are there all these negative numbers? Oh, it has to be between this and that. Okay. Actually, yeah, this works pretty great. This is probably, <laughs> I mean, again, you'll get funny looks about this kind of defeats the point of the assignment. Um, but this would probably be a valid solution for all the use cases that they're considering. Um, yeah, Rosetta code um, is quite resourceful. Uh, there are programming contests of sorts for which you could submit this sort of solution and they'll be like, hey, you got it right. Good job. But, um, yeah. Uh, okay. Um, so, get stash, get check master get stash apply compile yeah yep sometimes there is sometimes you miss something but i think here you're you're seeing all the relevant factors i think you got a pretty good hang of it um just happens that there isn't like a super elegant solution which would have been nice but oh well Um, so what's the deal here? Why were there so many? We have king moves and king moves. And then over here, we have king moves and then some pawn moves. I mean, the pawn moves do look legal. Um, they've got to be legal. So something about the way I coded this doesn't make sense. Uh, let me try it this way. Uh, move, generate. Man, I've got so many branches here from all these failed experiments I once did got to figure out some way to clean them or just check out the project anew. All right. So my previous change here. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Okay, so let's find my change this way. There it was. Do that. Maybe this will produce saner results. Maybe not. Who knows? Okay. So that change enables um, this branch to have the same 12 node count as the master branch has. 
Um, but that makes me wonder what was so wrong with how we had this here. was wrong about how I had this target includes squares that aren't in this um, things next to our king that are occupied. Um, So I see up here, bitboard target is equal to, are we looking at a capture move? Excel, just only look at the opponent's pieces that can be captured. If we're looking for a non-evasion, the target is simply squares that aren't occupied by friendly pieces. I think this is a reasonable constraint here. Um, the target can't include enemy pieces. Um, I mean, let me try this a different way. Maybe I've overlooked something tragically obvious. I doubt it. Um, yeah, so... Hmm. I guess I could tweak this a bit more. Um, pieces is a bit bored. Attacks from our king is also a bit bored. Um, Have we, oh, us is equal to side to move. We already have that figured out. Um, yeah, I'm at a loss here. So we call generate all. Well, no, let me try putting this back. And then in position.cpp, figure out what the hell is going on. Um, so where is it that we return true? And every branch that we do return true. Um, Okay. Yeah, let's see, like, king moves versus non-king moves. Um, let's try that. Well, no, I already know which moves are king moves and which ones aren't. That's pretty plainly obvious. Okay, what moves fall through um, atomic validation? They're just handled the standard way. That's something that I could learn from. Um, oh, wow. That's... Well, yeah, I guess every move, basically, because the king can't capture anything. 
So, yeah, all that atomic validation code uh, is kind of rendered moot. Um, oh, but if we're saying that the type of move is not a king move, then if it's a capture, validate the following. I see. So that's how some moves are king takes pawn moves are getting processed. Um, yeah. If type of piece on from is equal to king and um, capture m, that must be happening in some circumstances here. No. Okay. I guess I don't even need the first of those, but yeah, if we have a capture move. I don't think any of the moves being checked for legality are captures, though. Um, let me just grab this and try putting it in pseudo legal as well and see just what comes up here. Um, sure, why not? Let's put it there. It's just going to take more and more debugging info until I figure out what I've fucked up so bad that <sighs> who knows um okay something is just very very not as it should be and I can't tell what so uh, the more logging code I add the greater the odds that I'll be able to figure out what went wrong a7b8 now, that was something that was not printed last iteration, right? Right. A7B8 is checked for pseudo-legality. Why it is, I don't know, but somehow, um, I mean, I could put this through, uh, let's see, there's move pick. Now, if I'm looking at move gen .cdp and saying we want to try the more strict form of this, do we still end up checking a move for pseudo legality, or is that out of the question at that point? Um, no, a seven b six is something we check here. But up here was a7b8. Um, that might not matter. It might, but it might not. It seems relevant, though. Um, how do I really troubleshoot this? Go perfed one points out. Uh, go perfed two twenty one. All right. And if I change this back, it's still gonna say twenty one, right? And when I go run this test, um, black has three legal moves and white in response to each. Well, no. Response to some of these, uh, white has more than seven, right? No, seven each time because black's king can't block the pawn. There's a pawn move, and then there's, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, I'm still very confused how we get a different move count with two ways of doing this.
Hey, real bird. We're just losing our mind doing some atomic chess coding. Um, what most impresses me is that... Uh, I mean... What I changed here couldn't possibly have a functional impact. And yet, it changes the numbers that are output as the bench numbers for just how much effort is expended searching. It's just, I don't know how that could be the case. If type is equal to captures, target has got to exclude squares adjacent to the king. Otherwise, target excludes cap or occupied squares next to the king. Well, let me try this a different way. I've been, for performance reasons, opposing doing this, but um, it's actually the most sensible thing to do. And that would be to employ both the original rule and a new rule. and see if that changes, or how that changes things, if at all. Oops. There's our rule. Pardon the messy code. I could clean it up, but there doesn't seem to be a point in doing so. So if the type is captures, exclude squares next to the king. Otherwise, if the type um, is uh, non-evasions, exclude occupied squares next to the king. Um, this seems like a, this isn't going to have any functional impact as far as I can tell, but let's find out. Um, three nodes. Right, so that's as expected. Meaning, um, meaning that what I've coded here is equivalent to um, here, let's put the else up here. having this equal 1, having this equal 0, um, have the same functional impact. Which is to say that they both change the number of positions searched during a search. <laughs> yeah, good old job security with, like, open source code. <laughs> uh... The funny thing about Stockfish is, like, it's it, it's a highly collaborative effort um, with code generally being as transparent as possible. And the commit messages tend to be pretty high quality um, in the upstream repository. So, um, they just simplified away an array that was causing us all kinds of problems to begin with that they introduced and I was not impressed with in the first place and they finally realized it just wasn't worth keeping. Um, so that was pretty cool. Um, I'm just... I, I wish I had better stories to tell about it. Um, I probably do, I'm just not thinking of them because I'm still exhausted. Uh, but yeah, having that um, block of code, either enabled or disabled, doesn't change the net outcome. The net outcome is that um, bitboard target here says if type is not evasions, um, look for any square that's not occupied by one of our pieces. Um, So that's to say, um, 
I'm saying that if we're playing atomic chess, not only do we impose that rule, but also impose that you can't make a move um, that's to an occupied square adjacent to your own king. That seems pretty common sense, but somehow that changes the number of moves that got searched. And there aren't even that many possible moves like that to consider, but um, somehow that does, even at depth one, changing how much Stockfish searches. Ah, you think that coding in Klingon would confuse other contributors? You think so? I think that Google Translate, or just coders' inherent knowledge, uh, would help people. Oh, uh, that's funny. When I was speaking that, my phone decided that I was giving it commands. Um, not cool. I was wondering what in the world took place over there. Um, okay. So, what are we looking at here? Um, squares, position dot attacks from king based on the square upon which our king resides. I mean, I guess there's a possibility that the king might not be on a square. Is that the difference? Like, I just, I don't know. Um, I don't think that's the case. I'm pretty sure that isn't. So this calls generate all using a given target. I guess I could add some logging code and generate all to print out what the target is. Um, or I could at least subdivide um, as generate all does. It like generates the pawn moves and it generates other moves and such. Um, so I could break this up for atomic chess to do something uh, a little bit different. I've already got this code for atomic chess for pawn moves, so that's my functional impact or change isn't going to impact that generator. It's got to be impacting one of these knight, bishop, rook, or queen. Um, which kind of surprises me because there are no knights, rooks, bishops, or queens in that position. Oh, but. Let's see, non evasions. I guess we don't validate. Um, yeah, we just make a whole bunch of king moves. So I guess that's how a king move gets inserted. Um, yeah, if we're not generating evasions and we're not generating quiet checks, then we just look at where does the king stand and where are all the squares adjacent to that square. So those moves all get inserted. Uh, make move creates a move and puts it on the stack of moves. Or I guess it's actually a list. Um, so... Um, mm -hmm. yeah, so for non-evasions, King taking stuff moves um, should be excluded. But generate all, if I remember right, that should still delegate to something that checks the validity of the moves, no? Um, where was my change again? My change was here inside of generate 
So generating moves of a specific type. So I need to look at under what circumstances do non-evasion moves get generated. Um, move gen down there at the very end. Um, Says if nothing is checking our king, and if we're trying to generate a list of all the legal moves in a position, use non evasions to do it. And then if we're performing a validation, etc., or if the position, if this is atomic chess, then it's a capture and it's illegal. Um, I can expand this a bit. Why don't I expand this while we're troubleshooting stuff? Um, so, obviously we want to preserve um, the existing logic, but let's search it this way. Okay. This will hopefully remind me to change it back. Um, and let's take some of this logging code. Here we are. Um, out of pseudo legal and put it next to uh, this down here. then recompile. Ah, UCI has not been declared. So need that need to import UCI.h in order to be able to print out um, the move in standard algebraic notation form. What is the bug? The bug is that if you are searching if you're doing a multi-threaded search in atomic chess and you leave it running for an hour, um, a segmentation fault may occur. Um, so that's like the worst kind of bug. Um, I did narrow it down. I forget exactly what I found. I found numerous problems and potential problems with um, how atomic moves are validated and stuff. Uh, sorry. I keep switching context here because I'm coding as I'm talking, but um, I found that we are generating some moves unnecessarily and we are also validating the moves incorrectly um, in various ways. And there are many inefficiencies in how we're doing everything, so. But yeah, specifically, there's just a segmentation fault that was found that's causing me to go rehash all the um, move validation routines. Thankfully, the move generation, for the most part, is correct. Um, but in cases where the validation missed things, the generation could also be missing or incorrectly doing things. Um, all right, so A7, B6. Um... So I'm not sure how I got into an infinite loop doing that. That's interesting. Um, apparently a7, b6 is just a really interesting move. What the heck? How did this print out like as many times as it did print out? Oh, I see. Um, heh, I missed a condition here. Uh, there we go. Pro 
Perhaps the problem is that the code isn't itself in Klingon. Maybe if we did code it in Klingon, it would work better. Um, all right, so generated moves, the three king moves, and all seven responses to one of those king moves. So that looks fine. Um, I don't know why it bothered generating all those seven other moves. Um, that seems kind of a waste. Um, yes, the atomic chess engine would be my stockfish fork. Um, uh, which I'm the owner and um, we'll say one of the two maintainers of that fork. Hmm. Let's try it this way then. Print out everything. Okay, that didn't change anything. Um, so this looks fine, I think. Somehow, wait, a7b6, a7b7, which is illegal and blatantly so, a7b8 and a7a8. Um, so how does this differ? Only because that could confuse matters, even though in this position it won't. There are no captures, basically, or there should not be any captures um, in this analysis. So all those captures would be illegal, and we would have found that they are illegal already. Um, all right, so let's change this back. Um, actually disable this thing uh... whoops <laughs> oops um yeah no that's wrong um Try it that way. No sense coding more bugs into it while trying to fix it. Um, all right, so and let's run it. A seven A six is generated. See, that is really weird. Why would you generate king takes... Well, no, it makes sense that you generate it, but you figure out pretty quickly that it's not a legal move. I'm going to hit the washroom and be right back. Sorry about this.
Okay, I've returned. So. Um, well, no. A7, B6 um, would be King, B6. It is black to move. But if we're playing atomic chess, uh, like A7, B7 is illegal. That's walking into check. That's something that even during standard chess we would validate. Um, um, but, yeah, in atomic chess, the king can't take the pawn. That, like, shouldn't be even on black's radar of things he's trying to do. Um, which does make me wonder. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, so then after this we see in each of those FENs, white is considering things like knight e1, and is there c1, c2 somewhere here? Yes. So white's considering taking the black pawn with this king, um, and should quickly figure out that that's not legal. Um... The piece on the from square is not the king. Also, the piece on the from square is the king. And, um... Oh, never mind. Up here we're checking, is this a capture? And if it's a capture, um... Then... Uh, we need to test um, what are we testing attacks from the king or from that destination square hits the square where the king stands um, so if I were to take this and print it out up here and let's say just like stick a some kind of tab character to really make this stand out We'll find out that that particular move is not legal. Oh. Um, wait, are we not validating stuff? What gives? This is atomic chess, right? Um, yeah, it definitely says atomic there. Did I not compile this? Where did all my extra output go? Legal move validation. Um, okay. Could it be that only captures are being validated? So. That would explain why we have no additional output except in the event of a capture. Yeah. So we're only calling the validate this routine if a capture is about to occur. And we know that those captures are going to be illegal in this case. Um, yeah. People have various opinions about the best ways to do the rules of atomic chess. I think Lee Chess gets it right. In part because after their initial implementation, um, they asked for feedback, and I provided feedback, and they implemented, and I code reviewed with them. Um, so I'm of the opinion that the rules on Leeches are correct. Um, but I might be biased there uh, by nature of the fact that the rules are, well, based on my knowledge. Um, So, well, they're based on my knowledge of everything I've seen done with Atomic across the internet. Um, so be it uh, Nick Long's page about uh, Atomic Theory, be it the opening books by Sigamonin, be it um, just 
various ICC pages, and I think I've even played this on Fix. And I'm pretty sure we have the rules correct on Leech Us. Yeah, I've... Okay, so I guess my conclusion I'm drawing here is that even though what I've coded here changes this to say nodes 3 instead of nodes 12, that we don't need 12 nodes because the captures there are all illegal. But what leaves me very puzzled is um, how that nodes number increased from 3 to 12 and how it decreases down to 3 as a result of this fix. I mean, yeah, we're not generating the illegal king moves anymore, but those illegal king moves shouldn't have been used anywhere because they get caught in the move generator before anything else can get a chance to catch them. Um, like, the legal move routine here, it's not calling other functions. Um, well, no, I guess in debug mode, cert, this is not anti-chess, or if this is anti-chess, um, that, yeah, but that, that's not a functional thing. I'm just confused how this could possibly increase the node count. Um, maybe there's some assertion that's gone haywire here, that's... Uh, inflating the node count. I just find that hard to believe. But yeah, the legal move validators not... I'd be really surprised if it were inflating the node count. It could be. But... Uh, hmm. I guess one way to test. Make clean... Let's take a look at the make file um, and just say dash d atomic uh, and then go recompile the world here. So you get all kinds of warnings when you do it this way because there are unused parameters when you're compiling. Um, uh, I'm trying to figure out how to describe that, but there's excess code in cases where not all the parameters are consumed. That's unfortunate, but um, the benefit of being able to just with a switch in the make file, being able to enable or disable entire variants and subvariants um, outweighs the inconvenience of all those warnings. So yeah, here we see a node count of three, and we should see if I change this back. Um, that we have a node count of 12 somehow. And I can't for the life of me explain um, why we have 12 nodes versus three. Um, unless the capture method itself here does something ridiculous. Check is the destination square, not empty, and the move type is not castling. Or the capture square can be empty if the move type is en passant. But that would not increase the node count in any way. Um, is okay of m. Well, is okay is defined over here. I've seen it before. That doesn't increase the node count. Something is inflating the node count here, and I don't know what. Um... Generate all. Uh, 
Okay, that's a lot of generation. Prep move list. So hmm. <laughs> Search. And this is a single threaded search, so it can't be doing anything too complicated. Um, hmm. um, let's look at UCI first, because I don't think this is going to lead anywhere, so let's rule it out first. Uh, to move. Converts a string representing a move into okay um takes a string and converts it into a move so that's not what we're looking for thread.cpp um so this takes all the legal moves but again the legal move generator well, no, maybe maybe the optimization code is doing something ridiculous. We are optimizing at build level 03, so some unsafe optimizations could occur. But, um, yeah, no, I hear you. It sounds like uh, we went to apply deeper. Um, 3 to 12. I think you could divide it up this way. King takes pawn with black king taking on a6. King takes pawn with white king taking on c2. Those are two illegal moves that were generated. Um, but also after king takes pawn on a6, um, white has seven moves. So it's like we went another move deeper. I guess to prove that... Um, We'd have to go here. Um, whoops. If one and if um, uh, so I want to go over to move gen. And look for if zero or if one. Um, grab these three lines and switch that off. And go here instead. Um, like, there's no way an illegal move is getting searched, right? Oops. Now I can't call it cur over there. I have to call it something else. I have to call this um, move. blow my mind though if uh, we were actually searching an illegal move oh this is after we executed do move this is printing out I should have printed out before we execute do move because um, who knows what I'm looking at here yeah um Where's Q search? Where is that coded? It's in this file somewhere. Here it is, Q search. Assert, 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 assert stuff. And then we're gonna print out, oh, we don't have a move here. The move's already been executed by this point. Um, 
That's okay. Well, no, I guess instead of printing out um, the move, we'll just print out the position. That doesn't seem very useful. Um, but we can at least uh, see if we're ever hitting quiescent search. Is Atomic a zero-sum game? Um, chess itself is a zero-sum game, right? Because somebody... I forget the definition of zero-sum. I want to say that like it's based on um, there's it it's got a Nash equal well I let's look it up my goodness this is embarrassing in which each participants gain or loss of utility is exactly balanced by the gains or losses of the utility of the other participants yeah I couldn't figure out a way to put that um, Wikipedia puts it eloquently. So the total gains of the participants are the same regardless of outcome. Um, in chess in general, that's true. So um, I would say though, there's only three possible outcomes to an atomic chess game, a win, a loss, or a draw. So in that sense, it is a zero-sum game, but that's not your question. You're trying to ask something else, but I don't know what. Track ponder perfect. What have we here? Um mm -hmm. if the move's a legal move. So it is possible for move picker to generate a move that's not legal. Um that's interesting. I wonder how I could do that. this. I mean there should be no circumstance under which do move is asked to do an illegal move. Um, yeah, of course not. Um, Just for argument's sake, let's put the code here just to check that. Um, okay, and then print that out again. Why use booleans? Um, because Dr. Bool suggests them. I'm not seeing, I'm not understanding your question. I don't think this, oh, I mean the constants, false and true and such, are Boolean constants, but I think Stockfish represents everything as an integer. 
Um, but again, that's not addressing whatever your question is, because you couldn't have possibly meant that. Oh, you are just talking about in general. Like, what's the purpose of a Boolean? It has a well-defined domain. Um, it's got one of two values, and so you're not going to inspect some variable and then figure out it's got the value negative 5. It's, it's got a very easy to... Okay, not in general. Um, okay, I wonder if this undo move execute anything that's... Oh, hang on. Undo move. No, it does have a reference to the move that was undone. Okay. Let's see if undo move undoes an illegal move. <laughs> yeah, it's so weird. Nodes 12. I'm at a loss. Somehow we're generating way more moves than we need to. Um, and I don't even know in response to what. It's not like other classes. I mean, the only other thing that would directly access the move generator would be the move picker, but um, hmm. Right. Only the move picker would care um, if a move is pseudo legal. Nothing else would bother. Uh, so, I mean, if we have a transposition table move, that's one thing. Um, TT move, it's for the transposition table move, and it's pseudo legal, and it's a capture, and it's greater than the threshold. Could that be what's messing us up? Because um, the other case is where we check if a move is pseudo legal. Hmm. What do we do here for atomic chess? Uh, we don't generate more moves here, right? This is all static evaluation. It'd be truly a shame if this did do some additional searching, because that would only complicate things. Um, So, yeah, I'm confused. Maybe it executes the illegal move and then does some really strange things thereafter. That's hard to believe. If gives check. Does gives check need to move? No, this is crazy house. Um, it's not something we're checking during illegal or during atomic chess. We check the side to move. Check whether the uh, 
Whether this is a capture. And if it's not a capture, we define the threshold this way instead. Um, okay. Oh, this little doo doo here is the reason that number's increasing. I think. Um, here, let me try one more little thing. If one and if we're going to say tt move equals move none. I bet that's what increases uh, the bench number in cases where we don't want it increasing. So I want a number of three. Can we get that number of three? Okay, yeah, we get this number of three. Um, now if I go back into move gen that CPP um, and put my code change back in place, recompile. I think if TT move is equal to move none, then we get our move count of three. And the reason we get that is because the first move searched is King B7, which is not pseudo legal. Oh my goodness. That was messy. Um, so grep if one. Let's see where we. Let's steal one of those from. Move gen. That's cpp. Uh, in fact, that's not debugging code. This is debugging code. We can steal this one. Um, move this into move pick. That's cpp. In fact, let's not nest those, but just put this first. Um, that way you and I and everybody, oh, assuming I can remember how to do my import statements. Uh, Can look at this together and um, see what was the first move it searched. The first move it searched uh, was actually King B6, but that's not pseudo legal or something. Well, we're hang on. No, the first move that was searched was King A6. But with the fix in place, the first move that searched is king b6, which is pseudo legal, which means we don't have to do more complicated move generation. Okay. Um, geez. Get diff. Um, get status. Get checkout. Uh, we're going to leave move generator, position, and search the way they are. Uh, although I do feel like making one last change here to move generator, um, which is one of the things I did early on in the stream for ease of readability. Do I want to get rid of this tilde us here? I think so. It's not going to do anything to help or hurt performance, but it will help readability. Um, no, actually, I can leave that be.
because we'd never try to capture our own piece. Uh, the filter above guarantees that for captures, we're already filtering by this mask. That's why we're doing it this way. So, um, let's compile the stuff once more. Um, and we'll see that my move generator change. Um, let's see. Yeah, we have three nodes. Uh, check out master, get stash, apply, compile again, and we should see with that one line change that um, we're still going to get a search of three here, thanks to move picker. Uh, here, assigning the transposition table move to move none. Um, so if you set this variable to move none, um, then we generate the same move count uh, for a single depth search. Otherwise, stage gets incremented, and stage determines um, what stage of move generation we're in out of this list of stages. Being main search, captures in it, and just keeps iterating through stages until it finds a move. Um, but if the first move in the list, um, let's see, we're not in check, the first stage should be main search. If we are in check, the first stage should be evasion. Um, and then TTM says take whatever parameter was passed into move picker, which I have to believe is the first move of the move list. Um, although this didn't come from the legal move list, it came from somewhere else, which is ridiculous. Um, but that move was not pseudo legal therefore um, the stage got incremented from main search onto the next thing which was captures in it which probably found that there were no captures and then we tried good captures there are no and so on and so forth and so somehow this in searching must have considered how could my opponent reply um, I mean, let's take a look since we're already here. So, main search, um, turn TT move. Um, wait, so, how does this work? Oh. So if TTM was a pseudo-legal move, and I'm not sure that it was. No, it must have been pseudo-legal. King takes pawn. Otherwise, move none would not have already been assigned to TT move. Um, so, yeah, what was happening here? Was that pseudo legal for atomic moves was seeing is this a capture yeah if this is a king doing the capture then the move is illegal well somehow that failed i can't even begin to imagine how that failed but somehow that must have concluded that king takes pawn was a legal move or something or no that can't be um Yeah, I don't know. I am curious where Move Picker got invoked from. Because, like, Move Picker itself 
generates the move list. So TTM got initialized to something in the constructor of this thing. Um, so I wonder, supposing that this is the first position and the first move that we generate happens to not be pseudo-legal. Um, we're still getting some kind of move from somewhere. So where where is move picker get constructed? Oh, the last statement there. Search.cpp. Position, comma, tt move. All right, so search.cpp defines tt move which says just out of the list of moves. I'm not sure where this list came from, but take the value at index zero, or take the thread at index zero and take its first root move, or something like that. Some pointer math resulted in that move, which was pseudo-legal, but not legal. Um, being executed. Unless you assign uh, move none to that um, transposition table move. Some really complicated pointer stuff went on here. Uh, yeah, sorry about that. Um, the GitHub for this, let me type this out. I have to move my mic to do that. Uh, it's the second most, well, not the second most, but it's one of the most active stockfishes on GitHub. Because I'm not the only developer contributing to it. But so yeah, some really really super complicated pointer stuff went on here. I don't know exactly what happened. Just looking at all this in direction uh, makes me realize that what happened here was pretty complicated, but root moves, I mean, must have contained um, a pointer somehow to um, that move which can't be, which is not even pseudo-legal. Somehow we generated in the root position a move that wasn't pseudo-legal and somehow it must have gotten executed. Which is like the most improbable thing ever for standard chess. You'd never expect um, a move that's illegal to be generated. Um, uh, make file and move picker. All right. Push origin atomic move generate. There's no way this could possibly fail, but we have to subject it to testing anyway. So let's do it. Um, atomic. We'll get the number in a second. Fix atomic generation to skip blatantly illegal moves. The fact that I, um, yeah, so stockfish bench, oops, that's a lot of printing, um, make clean, get status, actually we've got stockfish 
Stockfish-Base, whatever. I don't remember what's in Stockfish-Base anymore. Make, build, make two threads, build. Usually I make a better effort to try to explain what I'm doing. Today I'm just, I've been troubleshooting this code forever and starting to lose patience with it. So today during the stream, I'm just trying to focus on getting it right. Um, and on, that has the unfortunate side effect that I'm just gonna suck at explaining this because I'm very heavily focused on trying to get it right. Um, all right, so there we go. Changes, bench all, but no functional change. Yeah, um, figure that one out. <laughs> uh, I expect this is actually not going to be subjected to testing, but Nicholas is going to tell me or not Nicholas, but Fabian's going to tell me um, if it's not a functional change, even though the bench number changes, um, uh, we still don't need to submit it, subject it to testing. I'm sure he's going to be thrilled by the news <laughs> there that we have a change that doesn't affect the bench, but it does or it does affect the bench number, but it does not have a functional impact. He's going to be very confused by that. All right, let's get Leech STV up. Uh, hang on, I need to type in a password. Okay, and... Let's put the Lee Chess crop on like this. And let's move the chat window back down. Properties, height 24. There we go. I can't get this to ever fold by default. Wait, I don't remember. Who is this person? We played them at some point. We had a fun game. But I, I don't remember who... Wait, did they log out? Okay, I can click on a person's profile. Um, they haven't posted in the forum. Oh, I remember. This person. Let's go look at our game together. Games with you. Let's see, how did this one go again? I was playing the black pieces. Or geometry. Like this. Let's get Maurice in here. I wonder if Maurice works in analysis mode. Maurice does not commentate during analysis. Oh, that's sad. That's too bad, really. I'll have to look at that because he could hmm, he could be a fun commentator during analysis but he'd freak out when you'd like jump all the way down the move list um whoa i was playing black here why did i follow this person um something happened there What's their current rating? 
I mean, they've improved from 1,000 to 1,400. Although, wait, how do I, okay. Oh, I see, I get to look at some span of the graph here. So, let's see, this blue line here would be blitz. They've actually improved quite a bit. I was so confused. Yeah, I don't get it. Um, I don't remember this person, unfortunately. They must have had a really compelling personality or something, but they aren't active in the forums, so... Um, let's see, who else? Uh, I used to follow Opera in here. He's a great person. It's just he's flooding my timeline uh, because he's so active and because the timeline is not as well coded as it could be. Um, but I try to use the timeline to track forum activity. I try to use my friends list to track um, people I'm interested in who are playing. And I don't know that I was particularly interested in that one player. Yeah. He's a good person. I just don't remember squat about him. Obviously, he's improved a bit since playing Blitz and being a thousand. He's moved to fourteen hundred. So either he's just super rusty, or he's put a lot of effort into it, or just had some bad results to start with, or something. Oh, but I said I wanted to watch Lee Chess TV. Here we and now Castle Rook 987, Queen D2. This Queen to C7, Rook AC1, Rook to C8. Um. Hmm. So you see how there. Let's put Atomic Chess on. It's a good thinking game. Ah, so. Trying to survive this position, which it looks like he should not. Ah. Uh. So let's keep our eyes on this game. I hope all's well with him then. B6. I'm just trying to cool down a little bit from having done that super intense coding session, so, which I did poorly B7 explain. Check. Sorry about that, but um, keep playing good, I just really needed testing. to get my head around the problem there because all my traditional A1. tools I used for troubleshooting issues were not working. That doesn't seem right at and all. it wasn't until and I guessed that one line of code that was responsible for changing how the move generation works based on a side effect of a side effect, um, which never happens in standard chess. Right? Um, it wasn't until then that um, I was able to make any progress with it. He knows how to draw this position. D6. So, and you're getting hunted. He was actually fine here, according to the engines. Hard to believe. So, So this is just one variation and I'm oh. just flicking out following that reminds me I did um, did start to thaw some food um, looks, for example, well food is kind of the wrong word for it the condiments and I should butter out, by the way, guys. like the I've got this butter from work that I had left over from a meeting um, and I have some good bagels to put it on but yeah, unless I take it out of the fridge, like, forever in advance, it's just, like, thick as a rock and not easy to cut. But I have thawed that, so let me go have some bagels and butter. C3. 
That is one of the hallmarks of a great champion. And this is a critical line here. He's not playing this just for fun right now. And now, you don't want to change. Yeah, Maurice is great. I kind of wish. I'm never going to find the time to do it, unfortunately. But it'd be fun no, to um, decorate some kind of AI behind um, Maurice there. Not in a way that would help anybody cheat or anything, but in a way that would make more interesting commentary. It'd be like things Maurice could have said. And things that are sensible, but... This is his bread and butter in this game. C6... Basically, I think a Maurice uh, emulator would be much. hilarious. Um, this move e4 now. Bishop to g5. He sure knows a lot about this atomic Some chest stuff. Why seems to have compensation? To... And. Although this move the engines don't like already. Queen of six. I can't say I'm familiar. No. I might be worried, but the fact I mean, I could say that, but I'm, that would be lying. Into C6. Oh, however, an already exciting action going on. And now the engine says, well, knight G4. At first, giving, giving black the edge. F3, wild action, but knight of two. Queen B7, mate, guys. Hello, everyone, and welcome. Knight F3, F6, deep in thought there. D3. Deep in thought. Oh, no. E6, uh, but C3. God forbid anybody think about their opening move. He looks like he's in control completely. Wrap it up. You go. I still think the Zug edition of this is just fantastic. I kind of wish. I don't know, like, if something's delaying that release or they just want to polish it further. Or if they want permission or I don't know, something. This line and prepare the line against the Russians. Queen of six, queen to a four. I just think well, between now, all the fantastic sound bites that we have of Maurice and of Zug, um, I think if we could synthesize a few more um, and get it to say things that are kind of sort of appropriate to each position, I think that would be a great success. Excuse you. But it's kind of funny that it says things that aren't appropriate in some positions. I mean, I guess maybe that's the whole point. Maybe looking for a bit more. Queen A3 is a little bit annoying. Oh. And the game just started. Knight back to F3, E5. Knight to G5. I mean, I've used Chessmaster. I just kind of wish Chessmaster had been open sourced, because then we could integrate Maurice with it. We see here, Bishop B4, C3, Knight C6. Now, completely crushing position for White. And, uh... Hoping to get him off your back, G6. Bam. Every other move is much worse, not like a little worse. Hmm. Found a crushing blow. Automatically, I want to play the move G3 was played. 
Oh, I forgot. I quieted the audio. And I think that the theme now. No, I actually boosted it back right up. This moment, Never mind. Think about going into hmm. that second half of the game and how the players are going to handle the time pressure as the game heats up. <laughs> Gotta worry about that time pressure. King F8. You don't see this setup every day. H5, and the game did continue. D3. And he's going to find all the right ideas. Knight D4. Yeah, Black's got to find something here or he's screwed. Rook to H8. Check again. King to G7. Queen H5. Explosive development here. Play rook back to G8. Check. Hmm. King to F6. And look. This board is wrong. Hmm. That is a better Queen H5 than the one I was thinking of. Check. Hmm. Guys. Sorry for food noises. I'm just really hungry. Ninety-four, a very dynamic play by Black. Queen takes. Queen takes knight. Only move. And what do you do to generate play? Hmm. Oh, atomic. It's just like normal chess, except for the parts that aren't. This is over. E five. Well, now and suddenly the move knight. Yeah, beats was G5. pretty awesome at it. Very, very sneaky uh, attempts by White. E5. I, I don't like when you're... But yeah, it's just like normal chess moves, except when captures happen. It looks so easy to win. F5, I think if you win a few games, or I'm sorry, if you watch a few F4. games, you'll get the hang of what the rules are. And then... And if you think that's spicy. H5 is the only break. The excitement is definitely brewing. We see here. You gotta play knight a6. Pure sharpening of the game. The engine is saying, very bad one at that. White is still crushing this a3. Bishop d4. Of course your coach would be upset at you. C3. And whatever you do. And what I don't like right now is that the engine is saying there's only one move for black to stay close. <laughs> only one move, guys. Certainly, uh, we know that this gentleman is no beginner. Was that the move, Maurice? The more positional route. Ah, the more positional route. Kaboom. And Bishop D4. Thank goodness he doesn't have that kind of level. F3. Bishop D7. H6. A wonderful move. Was played. I and still remember when, like, that explosion brewing. sound was first introduced, and it was much louder than it is now. And there were feedback um, posts to the effect that, um, yeah, it's just and way too loud and shocking and scaring people. <laughs> they had to tone it down a bit. Something else I gotta tell you looks really weird. Well, that suggests so that you could, finished, um... Guys. Maybe with the user script or user style, boost the volume of it. Just make it like super terrifying. This this G five idea can can you? Just imagine like if I had a follower notification that <laughs> just made that noise every time someone followed. Next best move. That would be special. Some people have done similar things. 
King G2. All right. Queen to K on G3. Absolutely. I mean, King to F4. Now the move A5, A4, and we see that. And so, okay, was played. Queen to see, this is the tricky part of the game. Asking for it. Check. Wow. He's playing smooth. King B5. Might have worked. Check. Check. King B3. It doesn't, it's not one of those, oh, that just looks boring. Like this one I'm about to show you. And the engine's giving queen C7. Uh, and that was clear. You need white's king on B3 for this to work. Back to B3. And then on A3. Oh, or you need some way to force a capture to, to happen uh, on White's terms. Then, and uh, only chance, well, check, check. And only after, check, the best move according to the engine, that's for sure. Queen B6. But still. That is, that is the key attempt here. And then queen to b5. Uh, oh, white's won it absolutely. now. Absolutely. I mean, mate, guys. That was pretty well played by black. Looks like what black is... Made out of? Black's got a space deficit here. Prove it. He's going to say, what the Black heck seems is to be in some pretty serious trouble. The engine's giving as the compensation, saying White's just winning, right? Yeah, White's just winning. Unless there's some concrete threats on this side of the board. <laughs> Accelerating the complications in the game. Guess what? So the best line is queen a5. What is this guy made out of? B4. Even I spotted b4 and, there. Uh, I wonder how this works exactly. Though I think C3 was perfectly good too. He's handling it very badly. And the game continues. You see how focused he is. Okay, Black's threatening Knight takes F2. Or Knight takes E3. The engines are actually agreeing that White's White could play Queen C7 and just win a knight. So it's clear. I don't think even very good players. That is, White could just play the queen up here, which forces queen takes. So fine moves like that, quirky moves. Yeah. So this is the threat. That he sends to a human eyes in order to keep it equal. And this knight sitting on G4. We should point out that this particular board does not have Knight takes e3. F3 and I think black is equalized. Looking to play this move bishop a3 mm. is asking for it. C5 is forced. C5. Every single move. Attack, attack, put him on his back foot. This is pure and then, I guess Clearly. no, no, no. You don't want to do that. And uh, the engine is now saying knight c3. Pinning your pieces tends to end poorly in this variant. Being signaled as per virtually dominant in this position, but... Maybe Rook C8. Castle and Queen side, mm. you know you walk into an endgame with him, you're just thinking... Castle oh, might boy, work. I'm gonna suffer. Mm. That's subtly brilliant. And that's the end of the story. So... D3 and... 
although the engines were distracted, they're saying, yeah, that move looked pretty good. Yeah, maybe Knight B4 here. And then... Because that threatens A2 and C2 and D3. But white will play Bishop D7, but... Yeah, this seems to be very inconvenient for white all of a sudden. Instantly. And the knight might end up on B5 as well. And... So, if A6, this is fantastic. Uh, black retains his material edge. A5. But it just looks complete. It just, just optically, just looks like there's nothing black could even dream of doing. Yeah, optically, it looks like there's nothing. B6. This was a, the fashion. Is there some guy. other way it could look? In something. In the 1800s, I actually. Oh, knight C6 is clever. Reversed it so I could see. The, oldest games in the database and I'm back in 1851 maybe bishop takes b4 black has to deal with knight c6 oh this knight moves oh, this to is c6. gonna sting that's a mate in two holy moly I can't believe black missed that that's like white's only threat in the position and black fell right into it I'm hovering my cursor over here because I want to look at the analysis. Ah. I missed the analysis board C6. button. Tactics with knight B5 even. I was hovering and trying to get to it. G6. Um, Queen to B5. That's my He's fault, I guess. We've seen him play amazing Let me chess. scroll knight down. Look at this previous oh. game. Let's get an analysis going because I'm pretty sure um, White was not winning the entire time. Yeah, Black had a pretty solid advantage toward the end and just blew it. Yeah, that was a beautiful swindle. I've never seen that mate before, but it makes sense that a knight and a bishop complement each other if they're on the same color square. So castle is a blunder or a mistake, but white shouldn't play d3, but simply play bishop a6. This occurred to me, but I'm like, what's the point? Uh, the king runs, because, okay, I guess if you take, um, then there's rook b1, and um, welcome to the pain train. For example, takes rook b1, knight b4, bishop takes, so white sacrificed three pieces, but black can't avoid getting mated. So that's why in bishop a6, black has to run. And if black has to run, um, that's bad news for black. So instead of castle, the best move was bishop g8. My thought was um, rook c8. But apparently black's not afraid of this check. So black just plays king d8. And everything's fine, apparently. Figure that one out. That looks really complicated. Um, this is a good game. We'll bookmark it. Uh, let's get Lee Chess TV back up here. In fact, let's look at something easier, something everybody can appreciate. Racing Kings. Or Geometry. Large. There we go. Um, I guess there's no Racing Kings being, game being played at the moment, or at least none by high enough rated opponents um, to have the game featured on Leech Us TV. That's too bad. Um, all right, so. I don't know. Um, let's take a look. Has this test been ex... Uh, here we are. Here's the test in question that we submitted. It's going to pass. There's no way this can't pass testing. But also, I might have some comments on this issue or something. Uh, 
Okay. Could you please give an example of how to reproduce the issue with current master? If you understand it, give a brief explanation of what the bug is about. Um, since we mixed the discussion about the bug with discussions about refactoring, we're a bit confused as to what needs to be fixed. Um, yeah, so... I mean, it didn't escape my notice that um, those discussions did get crossed and complicated this whole development. Um, Incredible technique. Sure. Rook at four doesn't work. And now uh king four, we saw all this. Alright, so but it's certainly the pressure on Let me leave a comment. You just can't stand it right now. Prove it. Alright, so Mystical nonsense that you say, wait a minute, what's this about? And he's so good at it. He is absolutely the best chaotic defender in the world. Where was my earlier description of this issue? Because if I remember right. Optics are great, but being but having a role, knowing exactly what you're doing in a game is so much more important. Often in the case you see bishops that have that problem, they're on great diagonals, but they're not doing anything. They're just on a long diagonal, big deal. Um, the most normal move. Finally, very interesting line. In fact, the engines already say, "Give him a pawn. Give, give him something." All in right. This position. So, it to be five. But now, what are you going to do about that? Bishop to e5. Once you're superior in the end game to someone, you can basically beat them like a drum in chess. You wrap it up, you go home. And I guess it's time to go home because the game just started. King h3. King to a3. And king h4 was played. After king to a4, you can't just play king h5. Until you do a double take on this because the idea is king h6. All right. Um, one. And then... Um, it is still much better for him according to the engine. Originally reported segmentation fault two. Every move is so um, logical. It's killer TT moves. So um, must be. It just looks ridiculous. Pseudo legal according. See how chess pieces move. Um, position looks a mess. And then Yeah. Well actually that's an interesting thought. Um the wazoo here. there are enough chess engines that do play atomic chess. Like search for the chess programming wiki. You'll find that there are quite a few that actually do play the variant. In this position. Um Maybe that'd be a more interesting exhibition to run this winter. Um, or run some sort of chess marathon where you play as no many variants as all the engines Damn. know and see who scores the highest. It'd be like a triathlon or a pentathlon or however you say that. King H4 was played. After King to A4, King H5. King H6. There are no complicated tactics to calculate. Let's see. So, and crazy game. Bishop d4. Um, pseudo legal moves cannot self explode. Back to D3. Um, King to 
F4, that's going to cost you. So three factor D duplicate code. Uh, Take home the full point. Uh, the smoothest move. Oh. And and now four. Um, um, Passant square cannot be adjacent to own king. Rook G8 is a move. Um, Why not just crush this guy? And what's amazing about this position is. Uh, it looks like. Well, let me just hold the word I was about to say. Let's see. And look, enough's enough. Perhaps there's an instability. That How does this go? Also, and look at this next move. He would have had to find the only move to maintain an advantage. The king on e6 and. In the tank. Um, but uh, look, just perfectly fine. Knight of six. And I should point out, by the way, guys, the massive Copy coordination link address. Queen C7, like out of nowhere, King H7 has been noted as an error by the TT on Passant. Moves. Must be. Um, Technically speaking, it's over, guys. Yeah. In including Fide on. For all peace types and for on passant codes. Um, and for non normal moves. In addition to the desire to de duplicate. And hopefully simplify code. All right. Just started. Um, and the last couple of moves have been weird. And so, okay, Bishop D4. And for on the sun, casting and promotion. Okay. All these pieces, one, two, three, four pieces on this side of the board. It means something must be going on on the other so side. So legal loose cannot self explode. Can't be adjacent can't to call in to the show and expect these doctors to help you. You need a personal doctor. By the way, and he's a fantastic player. We've seen him play amazing chess. King's A4. Nice moves. Uh, you have to help me. So, yeah, what no a terrific code change, or terrifying code change. All right, so back to the well, chat window. You gathered all the atomic engines you could find. Oh. Guess what happened? Rook G7. 
<laughs> well, I mean, by all means, um, I think you might gather more interest um, this game is if you, like... I think it could be an interesting opportunity to ask viewers or just a community in general um, to make submissions and to run a live tournament or an ongoing marathon or something of that sort where people are routinely submitting code patches. Um, Adam Craft for a while looked really promising. Um, but yeah, atomic chess is like super difficult now that I think about it. I wouldn't mind making some submissions to other um, projects, but I think yeah, getting more like viewer involvement and having people, even if they can't necessarily immediately defeat Stockfish, just getting some sort of marathon event going. Doing the Lee Chess broadcast of the games and maybe even getting people or yourself streaming it. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with the Lee Chess broadcast feature. I think it's uh, here under Watch Broadcasts. But if you go to that URL and then slash new, uh, you can actually create a broadcast. And so if you have a way of giving a live PGN feed. Uh, Lee Chia. Lee Chess could broadcast the games live, and people could comment on who they think is winning and losing and such. That was something that was missing in last year's Crazy House um, uh, tournament. But yeah, it'd be cool to run some tournaments like that on Lee Chess. I mean, look at this. Um, I guess the challenge is you have to have the web server that can do the PGN file service. It just needs to be a flat file that Lee Chess will pull periodically. But it's, I guess that's kind of inconvenient. But yeah, it'd be cool to have some kind of um, ongoing something or other. I've been saying it'd be awesome if Lee Chess just but allowed engines to play on the service, um, but that's kind of a non-starter with them. But they're not opposed to broadcasting engine-engine engine matches. It's just a whole hell of a lot more work for the engine developers really to get that sort of thing going. And, uh, like running cute chess in a space where it can edit a PGN file a that... Um, run that a web server distributes 